I've featured LED neon style strip before. The stuff that creates a very smooth linear line and is super flexible. In fact, in this case of this new stuff, it's ultra flexible. I mean, seriously, you can just squish it absolutely flat like that. And I've featured the 240 volt versions of the really robust, the sort of thicker stuff. And I've featured the 12 volt version and I've taken a bit of the strip out, seen how it's wired and configured inside. But there is a new kid in the block and it is this really thin stuff and the brightness compared to similar LED tape running at the same current, the sort of the similar strip, but this sort of thickness in red, this holds its own very well. It is actually very bright. But what's really interesting about this is the change in the manufacturing direction. And because of that, the price of this stuff has really plummeted. Let me elaborate on that further. He said, dropping a piece of the LED neon stuff. Let's uh, come down here and just uh, take the exposure off just a little bit, just to tame that down. So traditional uh, neon style of, uh, tape it has this sort of white housing that reflects the light. And if you just use standard LED tape, say pointing up the way like this, you'd get a row of dots along the surface. In this, the traditional case, you'd have a sort of plastic insert in there. And this is where they've cut corners now, with uh, bus bars. And they'd have the strip inside the LEDs and the bus bars would be sort of tied in every so often into that. And the light would fire out the side. And because this is a white plastic, well, as is this a thin stuff here, the light bounces around until it gets the front, which is the translucent stuff, the colour. So the light is bounced about until it gets up there and then it emits from the front as a very linear line of light. I could show you this by actually powering this up. One moment. I shall power it up. So you get a nice, smooth, linear line of light. Uh, I'm not sure it's going to look in the camera. To me, it looks very even all the way along, but the camera is very good at detecting intensity uh, variations. And I can actually see the little gap between, I think, that's the little gap between uh, LED sections where you can cut it, because you can cut this every inch again. So uh, what they've done to economise now is they've got rid of the bus bars and they've embedded the tape in directly into sort of hollow void in there. So what we have now, we've got the the white shell with the translucent sort of material going like that. And all they've got is the flat tape there with the LEDs out the side, no fancy housing around it, no bus bars or anything like that. You literally solder onto the end and they've compensated for this. Uh, if you look at the back of the strip, it is basically two big bus bars going along the back with sort of plated through all effect. It's quite odd. It's very hard to tell because they've basically, they've put the copper onto the flexible ribbon and then they've sort of put that white uh, solder resisted type coating and it doesn't come off that easily. But that's, you can see the slight indentations where it goes through to the other circuitry at the other side. So that's got rid of a lot of the manufacturing complexities, particularly the bus bars. But it means that to connect onto this stuff, uh, you basically have to strip back the uh, LED housing, and you have to solder onto the LEDs, uh, not the LEDs, but you've got to solder onto the LED tape onto the top of it, which is, you know, it's fairly straightforward. And that means that, well, you're all familiar with this generic LED tape that is basically about three pounds a roll on eBay these days. It's really, really cheap. I'll take this notepad out of the way. So they've basically brought this down to the same level. This is approximately, it's not quite three pounds a roll yet, but it's currently coming in about four American dollars a meter. So this meter here costs the equivalent of about four dollars. So I can give you the power specifications for this. It runs at 12 volts. It's cuttable every inch and that's another interesting feature in this. It's cuttable every inch. Notice this little window along the side. It's really, really clever. Let's get down close to this just because uh, that little window there is quite important versus what they used to use. They had uh, the equivalent window but on the bottom of the previous stuff. So the specifications are, you can cut it every 25 millimetres. I've worked out that the LEDs inside, every group of three LEDs in a resistor, is drawing about 15 milliamps. So one metre draws about 580 milliamps at 12 volts, gives about 7 watts a metre. 
Uh, what else is worth saying about this? It's equipped essentially got 120 LEDs per meter. That's more than this type of tape, which typically has 60 LEDs a meter. So let's explore this. Let's show how to cut it and uh, let's in investigate this little window on the side. So whereas the previous manufacturing techniques like this had these marks, I'll just zoom out just a tad, it's a bit big. They had to transfer from the inside onto these marks here, but there's another version which just has one mark every metre and they line it up, and then they print little dots on the outside at every sort of uh, 25 millimetre, every one inch roughly, uh, spacing. And they sort of, they synchronise it from the internal dot to the external dots, so that's where you can cut it. Because uh, if you cut it anywhere that's not on one of these marks, it will basically kill that section of LEDs, it will break its circuit. The rest of them will work fine, but that section won't. Uh, what they've done here is because the LED is mounted sideways. Can you even see that? Hold on, let's uh, let's focus on this and see if I can focus on this. It may not work. I don't think it's going to work. No, I don't think it's going to see that, is it? No, I don't think that's going to work. I'll go right back down to here. Uh, what they've done here is because the LED tape is mounted sideways here, they've got vivid black stripes at every cutting position and you can actually see them through the tape. Uh, even when it's off, I'll turn it off, you can see those distinctive... Uh, can you see those? I can see them. There's a little black one there, 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 and that's where you can cut them. So, say for instance you wanted a short piece like this, you could get a knife. This is where I'm going to have to take it to the edge of the bench to cut it. Uh, Unless I can, I'll put it on this, I shall put it on a USB power bank, flip out a handy blade, place it on that little line and press down to slices through it, and that's you cut the knee into length. But to terminate it, actually, we'll strip a bit of this completely open, but to terminate it as far as I can see, the, the best way I've found to terminate it is to take a pair of snips, and on the side that's facing away from the tape, just slip the snips into the side of the tape and just cut a wee chunk out there, cut a chunk out there, fold that up, and that gives you access, if you can see that, to the two solder joints on the end of the LED tape. Um, if you want to see the rest of the LED tape, I don't know if that'll pull out, I don't think it'll pull out. There's one way to find out, I shall grab it with a pair of those pliers and give it a wee pull and see what happens. One of the complexities of the other tape, I don't think that's going to pull out. No, I think it's going to need to slit with a knife. Uh, tell you what, I'm just going to slit this with a knife then. Okay, I've got my new and improved focus placement brick, so let's uh, stick this wibbly-wobbly bad dragon silicon brick up here. And I'll show you the inside of this uh, tape material. So I'll zoom down on this. And I shall lock the exposure off so it doesn't waver up and down. So when you uh, go into this and strip it open, this is what it looks like inside. It's the channel that supports the LED tape. And the LED tape itself is fairly conventional. It's got the... Where's some to poke with? It's got... Per section, it's got three LEDs. In this case, they've actually used red phosphor LEDs. And it does show it's quite bright. Uh, the yellow version of the larger tape is exceptionally bright. Um, the... Resistor here, well, let's see, can you actually see the value of that resistor? Yes, you can. Two, two, one, two hundred and twenty ohms. Two, two and one zero. Let's uh, nudge back. I'll just zoom in out till everybody's travel sick. On the back of the tape, we have the bus bars. I'm not sure if you're going to see them because it is very white. Actually, if I tilt it like that, you can almost see the sort of, the sort of through hole effect. And you can probably see the really thick bus bar. It's a very narrow channel in between them. And these are the black lines that are printed directly on this tape to show where it cuts. And they're very accurate. They're dead spot on directly underneath these copper pads. I wonder how they manufacture this. It also, it's not got the adhesive in the back and it feels thick. You know, that is a sizable bus bar. Now, this stuff does come in five metre rolls, priced about just under $18 inclusive of shipping, which is ridiculous. Uh, I've ordered another one. I've ordered ice blue, which looks like a turquoisey colour. Uh, and I also actually ordered uh, warm white as well, just to compare. I ordered it from a different supplier, but I think they're probably the same supplier under different names. I saw the ones they were selling it, uh, pretty much designed for putting on shelves. The 
LED tape was, I'll just put this down here. The LED tape was uh, spiraled up uh, and blister packed. You know, it looked like it was just ready to go on the shelf, which is a really odd twist for this in what looked like five meter runs. And it didn't seem to take that much in the pack packaging because it is much thinner than the conventional stuff. So uh, this stuff, I shall put links to, uh, if I can't find a keyword that finds this specifically, I'll put a link to the uh, listings that I got this stuff from, which means the price will probably go through the roof as it usually does. But that'll at least give you keywords and just sort of start. I don't know what the longevity of this stuff is, because uh, you get good LEDs and you get bad LEDs. As many of you have discovered with the LED tape, uh, some of it is crap, basically. That's why it's cheap. And likewise, you get the pro professional sign industry LED material like this. But uh, because it's aimed at the professional sign industry, it's just much more expensive. But they use good quality LEDs. So I don't know what, the, what, what this can be like. I suppose there's only one way to find out, and that's to put some on and leave it lit. But that's more or less it. We have this... Uh, so actually, let's work out. What would it have been for a full five metre roll? Uh, not allowing for voltage drop. Let's bring in the Sissy Squad calculator. Uh, so that I'm at, worked out at 0.58 times 5, that's the current. It would be about 3 metres per 5 metre roll. Uh, 3 amps, should I say? Well, what am I talking about? 3 metres per 5 metre roll. 3 amps at 12 volts, say 40 watts per uh, full 5 metre length. I don't know what the maximum length they recommend running it is before you have to sort of split it and then feed it again. Generally speaking, I'd recommend, you know, when you've got stuff like this, divide it into, if you can, divide it into multiple sections instead of trying to run huge runs just because uh, it makes it... Uh, it avoids that intensity drop-off thing. But this is a very neat and interesting twist. I know the neon aficionados will be annoyed about it uh, because uh, the LED industry was a bit malicious when uh, LED signage started coming in. They, they basically uh, did a smear campaign against traditional neon, uh, saying, pointing out that it contained toxins and mercury, but completely failing to point out that, you know, the LED manufacturing has also got various uh, toxins in it. And they also uh, completely failed to mention the fact that neon is almost completely recyclable glass as such, although that mercury thing is a little bit of an ish issue. But uh, yeah, they, uh, yeah, bad mouth in the industry, so the neon industry is justifiably a bit miffed about that. However, when it comes to the crunch, it's very hard finding a place that will do custom neon these days, and it costs a fortune to get it done. And this LED tape, all you really need to make decent, solid, rigid signs is get some metal strip, aluminium strip, and shape it appropriately, and then put this onto the side. Or, in the case of some recent uh, signs I've been looking at, vac form, and then press this into the channels and the sort of vac forms for uh, multiple repeatable sign. But it's interesting. It's an interesting direction it's going. This could well be the future of neon-like signage, except for those architectural applications that can afford the real thing. But there we go. It's interesting stuff. I like this stuff. It's, it's really quite well designed. It's a nice evolution.